Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, so today we are going to talk about a topic related with Chapter 7, Electricity and Magnetism. So this topic is included in your textbook, Team 3, Energy and Sustainable of Life. Okay, so in this topic, you are going to learn about three subtopics. The first one will be the electricity, the second one on how to calculate the flow of electric, electric current in series circuit and also parallel circuit, and also the concepts regarding magnetism. Okay, in first subtopic, you are going to learn about electricity. So in electricity, you are going to learn about what is energy. So there are nine types of energy around us. So what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. So no matter you walk, you run, you write, you read, all you need is energy. So what is the, what are the uses of energy around you? So no matter what you do, then you need energy. Plants require process photosynthesis to obtain their food for them to have energy to do other things. Next, for vehicles, they require energy from the fuel to move. Like the petrol you pump inside your car, it is actually the source of energy for the vehicles. Next, in your house, actually, you are converting electrical energy to light energy. So, what is electric? So, that's the topic we are going to discuss for today. Okay, so, what are the forms of energy exist around us? Number one, light energy. Light energy is the energy that you can be seen with your eyes. Next, sound energy is the energy that you can be heard. So no matter what you heard in this video or others, uh, or others musics, all they are sound energy. Okay, next, kinetic energy actually is an energy exists when an object is moving. For example, the roller coaster here is moving, so it exists kinetic energy. So when when a human is running. Or walking actually is a movement as well so kinetic energy exists when human is running and also walking next electrical energy so this is the main things we are going to discuss in this topic so electrical energy is the energy that consists in electric charge so no matter the electric charge flows it will bring electrical energy to any appliances or any devices Next, gravitational potential energy is an energy exists when an object is placed at high position. For example, the object placed at high position, it will exist a gravitational potential energy. So, the formula for gravitational potential energy will be mass multiple with the gravitational constant and also the height. So, it will be equal to your energy. So, the higher the height, the higher the energy you can obtain. Okay, next, for elastic potential energy, actually it is an energy exists when an object is compressed or stretched. So, usually this kind of energy will be obtained from spring. When a spring is stretched or compressed, you will obtain elastic potential energy. And the formula for elastic potential energy actually is half kx squared. So if your compression or stretch is too long, it will be increasing the elastic potential energy as well. Next, nuclear energy is the energy released during nuclear fission or nuclear fusion. So you will learn in more details in physics SPM. Heat energy is also an energy and it is exists when there is change in temperature in an object. So for example, before that it is 30 degrees Celsius, once it heated become 60 degrees Celsius. So the change of temperature will become 30 degrees Celsius. So from the formula, heat 
energy equals to mc delta over m is the mass c is the specific heat capacity and also delta is the change of temperature if the change of temperature is high your heat energy will be also high okay Next, chemical energy actually is an energy exists when chemical reaction occurred. So a lot of people they are not clear. Okay, they don't know about food. Actually, is also a kind of uh, a kind of source of chemical energy. Why? Because food actually they eat inside our mouth and then they will undergo digestion. Digestion actually is a chemical process. So. If it is involving chemical process, then it means chemical energy will be exist or it will be produced when the reaction occurred. Okay, next we are going to learn about what are the sources. So, source in science there are two kind of sources. So one is renewable, for another one is non-renewable. For renewable sources, actually you don't need to worry about uh, since it is infinity and you can use it as, as much as you want. But for non-renewable, you need to worry about when your sources will going to be and and you, you need to find something to replace. Okay, the first one will be the sun. Sun actually provides energy in the form of light and also heat energy. The most uh, the things that require sun the most is plants since they need uh, sunlight to undergo photosynthesis to produce energy for their other activities. Next, geothermal. We can obtain the heat energy underground in the form of boiled water. So, in the form of boiled water, actually when we extract the geothermals and then we need to convert it to become other energy, undergoes other process. So next, hydropower. Hydropower actually we can obtain electrical energy by converting the kinetic energy of a moving turbine caused by the flow of water. So from here, we can see that the water flow here and then after that they will reach they will reach the turbine. They will reach the turbine and then they will move it and then they will spin the turbine. They move the turbine, it will it is it is producing kinetic energy. So by moving the the bin it will produce a electrical energy and deliver to the houses next is wind so wind actually can produce electrical energy also by converting the kinetic energy of a moving blade caused by the blowing wind so from the image here when wind comes here so it will be uh, rotating the blades so by rotating the blades actually it can produce electrical energy and and uh, deliver it to the houses so next biomass biomass actually we can produce the energy from the waste of animals and plants with the required machine and then you can produce the energy that you want okay next we are going to talk about non-renewable sources the first one will be radioactive substances so radioactive substances example is uranium so when uranium reacted with a nuclear, it will produce energy. Usually we don't use radioactive substances in our house because it is quite dangerous for humans. Okay, next, fossil fuels. Fossil fuels actually uh, is uh, it can provide it can provide energy when the fuels are burnt. So the usual one is the petrol we usually pump into our car, petroleum, and then gas asli, and then batu arang. These are the fossil fuels that usually we use in our daily life. And depends on their usage, they can convert to different energy. Okay, so before we enter the topics electricity, so we need to understand about the concepts of charges. So we need to know that all substances actually are made up of atom. So an atom actually it contains proton, electron, and also neutron. While proton actually is positive charge, electron is negative charge, neutron actually is no charge. So for every atom, they will be having a nucleus. In that nucleus, it, it is consisting proton plus neutron. 
and every atom also have a lot of shell or orbits surrounded by them and electrons will always flow at the shell and also the orbits instead of staying inside the nucleus okay so for an atom they are consisting the same amount of proton and electron which means proton and electron they will be having the same number however if your proton number is much more than if your proton number is more than electron means that substance is a positive charge seems like if your substance is electron more than proton then it will be negatively charged since atom they are having the same amount of proton and also electron so an atom actually is a neutral substance okay so we are going to talk about electrostatic charges how an electrostatic charges phenomenon occur so how are the electrostatic charges between the objects will be produced so before that we need to understand okay charges actually there are two types like what i say just now one is positive one is negative okay so within the charges actually they are attraction and also repulsion so if the charges with a uh, same poles which means it is same charge actually it will be repelled with each other but it is different than different charge that it will be attract with each other so example here if a acetate road actually it is rubbed with a cloth when it is rubbed with a cloth, an acetate root actually is positive charge, while a cloth it is negatively charged. So when they rub with each other, positive and also negative, they will be attracted with each other, so that uh, they will change their polarities. So this is how electrostatic charges occur. So let us see some examples. So example one, when a cloth is rubbed with the comb, so cloth is negatively charged once it rubbed with the comb the comb will become negatively charged since it is receiving electrons from the cloth however the paper pieces here is positively charged so that they can be attracted to the comb the comb rubbed with the woolen cloth will gain electrons from the woolen cloth and will become negatively charged so this enables the comb to attract the pieces of papers here because the forces of attraction uh, exist between the positive and also the negatively charged okay next why do your hair get stuck to the cathode ray tv screen after it is switched off so when we when you use your hand to touch a switch off tv screen sometimes your hair will be get stuck there why let us understand on how a cathode ray tv screen uh function first okay so in cathode ray tv actually they are electron gun so electron gun will be emitting electron and then shoot it to the screen so when screen receiving the electrons from the electron guns it will become negatively charged it will become negatively charged so next when your hand is touching on the screen actually your hair is positively charged your hair is positively charged so that it will be attracted to the negatively charged screen so in order to compensate it try to maintain the electrical neutrality the front of the screen become positively charged so that it will repel with your hair okay the next one have you ever experienced before electric shock when you trying to open the door knob and why will this happen so as you all know our hands also have some charges and the elect and the door knob actually there are some charges as well so when you are touching it actually it is it is transferring electrons and also protons with each other so when the process of transferring uh, charges you will experience electric shock 
Okay, so next, you are going to learn about electrostatic force. In electrostatic force, there are two effects. One is repel and one is attract. So as what I said just now, if uh, two objects with same charges, like if example in here is positive or here is negative, negative, they will be repelled with each other. They won't be attract. So in another case, for positive and also negative, if they meet each other, they will be attract with each other. So the strength of electrostatic force actually depends on the quantity of charges that are present in the object. So the higher the charge, the higher the quantity of the charges, the higher the electrostatic force. Next, for electroscope, what is electroscope? Electroscope actually is a device used to detect the existence of the electric charges on, of an object. Okay, so if the comb here actually it is having charge, then you can use you can use this electroscope to detect whether the existence of electric charge on it. Okay, so how an electroscope work? So if the road here it is negatively charged, it will attract the positively charged from the electroscopes comes here. And then the, ele the negatively charged will be coming here. Since you can see they are all negatively charged here, so these leaves will be separated since they are repelling with each other. However, the positively charged here will be attracted to the charged road. So like this, you can identify whether uh, the whether the road is having charge or not. But if a road is removed, if a road is removed, so the electroscope will be going back to the original original mode, which is positive and negative will be attracting with each other. So here is positive, here is negative, so they will be attracting with each other. So this is the most ideal situations when electroscopes does not have any charges exist around it. Okay, so how a thunderstorm occurred? Usually, in the clouds, there are charges, positive and also negative. When positive and also negative charges react with each other, the thunders or the sparks will be ignited. So the sparks, when you amplify it, actually will become thunder. So that's the reason how the thunders are created. Okay, so next. What is a lightning conductor? So as you know, lightning can cause damage to the tall buildings or even uh, humans inside the buildings. So a lightning conductor actually is helps to avoid damage to the buildings. So lightning conductors are installed on the buildings to reduce the chances of lightning strike. So the lightning conductor usually we use copper strip or road or copper road. Okay, so when one end consists several metal spikes, so here is the spikes, it will attract it will attract the thunders to it and then it will sense the thunders go to the underground so that it avoids that, uh, avoids the thunder go and damage the buildings and also to danger the humans inside. Okay, so next we are going to learn about electric current. So what is electric current? Electric current, okay, in every electrical appliances, it requires electric changes to operate. So, energy that is needed for the electric charges to flow can be generated from the sources such as electrical generators, dry cells, and also solar cells. So, what is the sources for voltage? Voltage actually, it also name it as potential difference. So it can be generated from the electrical generator and also electric cells. So what are the electric cells? For example, it is a battery or solar cell. So electrical generator actually it converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. It requires kinetic energy like movement. For example, the hydropower we discussed just now and also the wind. Okay, for electric cell, it converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Okay, so in this dry cell, electrons will be flowing from negative to positive. However, current will be flowing from positive to negative. 
So when current flows and it is a complete circuit, the light bulb here will be ignited. So what are the relationship between charges and current? From here, this is the experiment we are going to study regarding the relationship between the charges and also the currents. So this device, we name it as Wandergraph. When you switch on the Wandergraph, the dome here actually will become positively charged and it will attract the negatively charged from the earth to flow to the dome. So the negatively charged will be attracted here will be attracted to the dome. Okay, so when it when the galvanometer is connected with it and it deflected here, so which means current is exists here. So what is a galvanometer? Galvanometer actually is an instrument for measuring a small electrical current or a function of a current by deflection of a moving coil. So deflections here indicates that the flow of current Okay, so more charges accumulate on the dome, the deflection of pointer will become greater. So the rate at which charge flows indicates that the measurement of electric current. Since according to the definition, current is the rate of change of electric charges. So what are the conclusions we can make from this experiment? The deflection of the galvanometer's pointer indicates the flow of the electric current. The electric current can be defined as the rate of flow of electric charges through the conductor. So how to measure the quantity of electricity? In order to measure current, you require an emitter, the device with symbol A here. So it is emitter. So what are the SI units for electric current? It is in ampere. So this unit is very important since you are required it in the calculations later. So what are you required to measure voltage? The voltage is actually is a potential difference like what I said just now. Okay, so you are required to measure it with a voltmeter with V. Then the unit is volts. So, what are the relationship between voltage, current, and also resistance? The ability of a conductor to limit or resist the flow of electric actually is known as resistance. So, the unit for resistance is ohm, this symbol. Okay, a fixed resistor. So, this is a fixed resistor. Fixed resistor, they are having their particular resistance and it is not able to change but for a real state for a real state is a variable resistor then you can a uh, vari variable it so it is required depends on your situations and then you are you can change the resistance depend on the situations okay so current voltage and also resistance they are three important electrical quantities that are closely related to each other so which means if you change any other values it will affect the another two uh, magnitude as well ohm's law ohm's law is a law that we usually will see inside electricity so Ohm's law states that the electric current that flows through a conductor will be always directly proportional to the voltage across two ends of the conductor, but provided the temperature and other physical situations remain unchanged. So the formula here V equals to IR is very important for your calculations later. Okay, while V it stands for your potential difference of voltage, I it stands for your current and also R it stands for your resistance. Okay, so from the formula just now, V equals to IR. When R is constant, for example, R is 500 ohm. Okay, so we need to vary I to obtain the value of V. If I put I is equals to 1 amp, 2 amp, and 3 amps, 4 amps. So what is the value of your V? V equals to IR. So I multiple with R. Let your R constant for 500 ohms, so your I will be 1, and then 1 multiplied with 500 will become 500 volts. So when 2 amp, it is 1000 volts, 1500 volts, and also 2000 
votes. So from the data here, you can realize that okay, voltage will increase when current increase. So when you plot on the graph, it will become like this. V is here, I is here. So this means that voltage is directly proportional. with your current so that's the whole concept for ohm's law so that's the end for today's video if you feel like this video is useful then please give me a like if you have any dopes you can leave a comment below and the most important please do not forget to subscribe this youtube channel see ya and logics and laboratory will be right back